comfortably sitting by the fire, we're gonna have a look at our checklist that we've got to do for our 10,000K service. What's this, a Friday afternoon gathering? Bigger shoe with a bit more clearance. That is a $1,000 steering wheel. Period correct, Gen 1 4 on a wheel. What is he doing with that drill? Delivery from Michael. It's fun Friday. Got the forerunner out and about for the day. On our most recent trip, we just ticked over 10,000 Ks in the 79. 10,000 trouble free kilometers. What we're going to have a look at in this video is the service protocol the Toyota gives at the 10,000 K mark. Plus some extra bits and pieces that we'll do. But first, we're going to get these Kumos off. We've done 4,000 Ks on them now. We'll have a close look at them at CarTech Tire and Auto when we go back there to fit up the stock tires. So my plan for the 79 now is not to do too many more kilometers. My intention is to try and sell it with as close to 10,000 Ks on it as I can. We've got a couple more towing trips coming up, but other than that, I'll be using the LM106 dual cab now as my daily. Before we head over to Nick's this morning, we've got the gurney out and we're gonna get all this mud from underneath around the spring perches and the springs. Have a look at it all. I'm sure plenty of you that do like the mud and your water driving do pay people to do your handbrake adjustment. And I'll show you just how easy it can be. Now this isn't my first new Toyota. I think the product that these people have to sell is second to none. I feel that the service you get from the people at Toyota, unfortunately, isn't as high in my opinion. The truck went back to Toyota for its 1000K check. I did have a couple of little notes to, to discuss with them. The remote, now the remote wasn't working unless you're right next to the car. So I mentioned that to them and straight away on the defense they go saying that because I had an alarm fitted, it's the alarm person's problem. Now this alarm guy is a Toyota contractor. So he does the alarms for Toyota's vehicles. So I don't get that. The second little thing was my hands free. So on my mobile phone, when I'm using it in the vehicle, the volume is very low. Now I'm not sure if it's set that way for a reason or what have you, but I asked the question and straight away again on the defense, you've had a camera fitted. That unit's been removed. You need to speak to your camera people. And again, that camera person is a Toyota contractor who does the cameras for the Toyota vehicles. So go figure. Now, unless I do have a warranty issue, this vehicle will never go back to Toyota. This vehicle I won't have so long, but I'm just talking in general. None of my Toyotas ever go back unless there's a warranty issue. The catch can. So with my gray truck, I basically had the people at Toyota on that first 1000K check acknowledge that the catch can isn't a modification and that if I wanted to bring the grey truck in for service intervals, that all they said was the catch can can stay, but they will not be servicing, emptying or cleaning the catch can, which was fine. Now I do understand all pre-rego work that was done by TJM. Toyota will not cover any warranty on the components that have been changed pre-rego. So all the suspension, the bushes, the shocks, the steer damper, all of that scenario would all have to be looked after by TJM or myself. All maintenance and repairs on any of my Toyotas is all done in-house. I've got great sponsors that own mechanic shops that are qualified and do all the work. So in that regard, I am very lucky. So after 4,000 Ks, we're reading around the 12, 13 mil. So I'll have to check earlier footage, but I think they started around 16. But they're worn evenly. Good tire. The idea was to get in there, wash everything out, take the drums off and adjust the handbrake. But it's getting on, it's dinner time. We'll deal with that in the morning. Good morning. Well, that's right. We've still got this to deal with. So I'm going to show you how to adjust your handbrake. I guess each to their own, but I like going in the mud just a little bit more than having to do this. So for a lot of people, they won't go in the mud because of this. 
I'm a little bit the other way. But on the next truck, uh, while Mark's got it down there in the kit, you get his transmission handbrake. So it'll be just like the grey truck. No more adjustments. Now the caliper's held on by two bolts that go back through the backing plate. So we undo those two and we can pull that to the side. It's got a flexible hose there. And not all of you are going to have airbags. So when you don't have airbags, you can easily access these with a socket. But in my case, it's a half a turn with the with the ring spanner. And what we've got is a couple of bolts through the drum to help push it past a lip that gets created here each time. The truck's only 10,000 k's old, so that lip's not too bad at the moment. On the old grey truck, we used to have nightmares coming into here, and that's why I put the Mark's transmission handbrake on. I'd do it on this if I wasn't selling it so soon. Get two hands going here. So this is just a take off, clean, adjust, put back on. We're not changing any components in here because we shouldn't have to. There we go. So that's all still nice and clean inside. The shoes are new, it's just the mud. Bad, bad mud. And you can see now too where those high clearance plates would come in handy. So that bottom plate would be up way higher and you wouldn't be hitting all the mud and all the rocks there. Look at that, look at that chunk. All for another truck, unfortunately. So this here is our adjuster. When we wind it down, it opens the shoes up, which then grabs the back of the drum, and that's your handbrake. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna wind it up a little bit by hand, and then slip on the drum. So on the drum, we have this little rubber grommet, which we need to pop out. That there is so we can get a screwdriver in to do the final adjustment. So we've got it on. Now I'm going to bolt the caliper on first so that I don't get any sideways movement when I do the handbrake up properly. But that hole needs to be down here at 6 o'clock and that's how we get to the adjuster again with the drum on. I've got a delivery coming from Michael, my Toyota guy, so that we can continue the 10,000k service. Okay, we've got the caliper on. Final adjustment now for the handbrake. So what we want is we want, don't want it to be too tight. We don't want it to be dragging for too long. So that hole there, down at six o'clock, where we can then do final little adjustment. So we want to come down a little bit more. Rain's coming again. This is just a bit too fine to get in there to have a good feel of it. And no time to go to the shop. Way better with a wider footprint. Now this is the bit where it takes a little bit longer than you think. You just gotta be patient here because there are only small clicks and you can lose your way pretty easily. Okay, starting to get tight now, the adjuster. Okay, so we back it off a couple. Okay, so that's this side set. Before I put the grommets in and the road ties on, one little test you can do just to make sure that you that's good, that's like three or four clicks. So the trick is to do that adjuster up until the shoes hit and then back it off twice. I don't even think the handbrake held on this hill from the start, from day one. So we've got it nice and tight. And it's not dragging at all on the road. How it should be. Fun Friday. Got the forerunner out and about today. 
These tyres and rims came off the 106, and the 106 is sporting the 33 10.5 15s, which belong to the Forerunner. We're going to take these tyres and rims over to Nick's, and he's going to fit the 285 7516 Kumo MT71s on it. Then we'll be running them on the dual cab. Delivery from Michael. So we can continue on our 10,000k service on the 79. We've got genuine filters. We've got the synthetic oil. Change the label on that. Also, he's found me some genuine cross member bolts for Bullet Truck. That cross member's coming on and off that often these days. I'll have to put new bolts in every now and then. And then this, he sent as a replacement battery for the Fortuna. It's getting a little bit lethargic on these cold morning starts. And what I found on the grey truck was I got four years out of the original battery and then I went genuine. In my experience in the past, I've put batteries from Battery World and Super Cheap in and I've never really got more than 18 months out of them. But this is your genuine Toyota parts battery. It says made in Australia too. So we'll swap that over and that should give her another couple of good years of starting. I mean, her car's only done 20,000 Ks, but it's almost five years old. Comfortably sitting by the fire, we're gonna have a look at our checklist that we've got to do for our 10,000 K service. So this is maintenance for normal operating conditions. So I'm not sure if we consider what I do as normal if towing three ton and trying to drive up some crazy mud hills. But let's have a look. So we've got to check for our standing recall campaigns. We'll get Joe from Toyota to sort that out for us. We've got inspect driver's floor mat for correct fitment and retention. Now I've taken that floor mat out a few times to clean the mud off. It's all good. I've seen that all our external lights work. We've inspected the drive belts. We've inspected the battery. Inspect water sediment accumulator. Now this is the water that sits at the bottom of the filter, the fuel filter. So what we're gonna do is one better. We've got a genuine fuel filter at 10,000 Ks. We will be changing that. And what we saw in the service interval, they wanted us to drain uh, the bowl at the bottom to get the water out. So that's your drain tap there. But we're gonna be taking the whole lid off to change the filter completely. So we can give it a good clean while it's open. Undo the electrical, three bolts to undo. Remove the top, carefully put it aside. Also a good idea to have one of these behind your back seat for those outback runs in case you do get bad fuel. But we'll give that bowl a good clean out now and get the new filter in. There's your difference, that's 10,000 Ks old. So compared to the gray truck, which was a 16 model, this filter setup's a little bit different. It's a very tight fitment, the assembly now into the case that it sits in. We've got it in, put the lid back on, make sure it's clean and do up the bolts. Then we prime, prime, prime. Do this a good two dozen times. You will feel it gets significantly harder, so I can't push that anymore, so that's full. A quick blow. Inspect engine air cleaner filter. We'll go one better than that. We're gonna replace it. Okay, genuine air filter. There's probably nothing wrong with this one. Might keep it as a spare. Although, it does show signs of uh, being dirty. It's not like it's been in mud, this truck. Here's our genuine replacement. No doubt the most easiest of maintenance jobs, this one, changing the air filter with the factory air box. Four clips. We're gonna inspect brake fluid. We're gonna inspect clutch fluid. We're gonna inspect power steer fluid. Now this is generally what I do before I head away on a trip. We're gonna inspect accessory items. So that's your tow bars, um, your snorkel, I'm assuming, 
uh, bull bar, siceps. We don't have that many accessories. It's a 79 series. Inspect internal lights, horns, wipers, and washers. So the kids do that enough for me on most of our family weekends away. Seat belts, webbing condition, buckle, retractor mechanism operation, that's all good. We will be doing an engine oil change. We've got genuine uh, synthetic oil to put back in it with the filter. That is a genuine filter. Still looks so clean. You can see the gold through it. Okay, we're gonna take the filter off. You need your special filter removal tool. Now with the gray truck, the first 10,000 Ks, I didn't change the oil. And then I was very strict and changed it every 5,000. So that was the pre-DPF model. So that first 10,000 Ks I just mentioned, I noticed after 5,000 Ks, the truck was actually using a little bit of oil. So this oil here, the full synthetic, this is the DPF model. It's done 10,000 Ks uh, with no oil usage. So maybe the synthetic oil uh, does last that little bit longer for your 10,000 K intervals. Probably one of the easiest trucks to get an oil filter out, these are. Genuine oil filter and gasket. So we'll prep that up. This is where the gasket sits. So there's a small spot here where you can get your fingers in and pull it out. A bit hard one-handed. And we'll put some oil around that gasket before we put it on. New sump plug gasket, nine and a half litres these big girls take. Look at the liquid gold. So generally I'll do a full five litre and then I'll run the second one to the marker of half a litre and it's normally spot on. Now I'm probably not going to have this for the next 10,000 K service, 20,000 K. I'm looking to put roughly 5,000 more Ks on it and then hopefully the next one's here and it's out of marks and I'm driving around on portals. Lubricate steering knuckle drag link, kingpin center arm and steer linkage. I grease up everything before every run. So all my unis, all the steering stuff, it all gets greased up before every run. Propeller shaft and tighten propeller shaft bolt. So we do that religiously. Brake pads and discs. Well, I've just gone in there and seen the rears because I did the handbrake. That is all fine. Tires and inflation pressure. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put the factory tires back on for a little while. Truck's gonna be up for sale very shortly. We've got a couple of toes coming up. Rotating and balancing will nick from CarTech Tire and Auto. They see all that. So then there's the final inspection and the road testing. So that's all they really want. Now my pre-Rego GVM upgrade with all the suspension components. So TJM's had a good look back at them. We're also going to be, because we've done a lot of muddy driving, I'm gonna be draining the front and rear diffs and putting the GL5 in that. We're gonna be draining the gearbox and transfer and putting the GL4 in that. Bit of a polish. I'm actually not sure why I'm bothering because I know they're gonna be in mud by the end of the week. But until then, it'll complement the tire nicely, a, a nice polished chrome wheel. Back in the 106, pretty early. I thought of something during the night. These 285, 75, 16s are gonna be quite a, a bit wider than the 33, 10 and a half that we're running. We might need a bit of clearance up front. So we're heading over to Bullet Truck Garage. I've got an idea. What I'm looking to do here is gain a bit of clearance between the tire and the edge of the step without doing a diff push. So we'll get our measurements and see how we go. I've achieved 35 mil clearance here. So it was kind of like doing a diff push. So the 285, 75, 16 should clear there easily now. It was rubbing there, the 33, 10 and a half, 15. And I gained 50 mil in height. Now this was just using some of Bullet Truck's old front suspension components. So you can see here now, how much more level it appears. It was always nose down this truck. It had the heavy duty rear springs, but then once we fitted up that winch, I watched it sag just that little bit more over the first couple of weeks that the weight was in that bar. Even here with the bike trailer on the back where it's parked on the street, you could see clearly it was nose down. Have a look at it now, it looks schmick. Nice and level. All right now we got the 106 wheels sorted. We're gonna get some shoes on the Forerunner. And for all of you that have been hassling me to get these black, you win. There's a little bit of surface rust showing now 
on these white sunnies, so we'll get them black and they'll go on the forerunner. Might lay it flat. Gonna use the Duramax in black. It's a quick drying one. Give it a couple of coats of this. I'm in no rush to get them on. Not bad for a hillbilly. And that can of paint, that Dulux Duramax, it'll probably do all four tires. It's got such good coverage. All of you that put your big springs in and your shackles and wonder why you've got driver's side down at the front. So your drag link and your torque rod are fixed points basically. So you want to try and lift this car but they're holding it down. That's why you get Hiluxes that have lift that driver's side down sag at the front. This needs to be made longer. So the distance from the top of the diff to the chassis there needs to be longer so you can get adjustable ones that you can make as long and as short as you need and the only way to make this longer legally I mean you can cut it and sleeve it but that's not recommended they're a drop drag link and they're as long as you want them to be again adjustable so tomorrow we'll take this off we'll take some measurements and just see if I need it not often you see a Hilux with one of these original bash plates on it We'll unbolt that skinny little thing and get some measurements. Before we take it off, the important measurement is center to center of the bolt. So we know the length of it is 347. I have center of bolt to center of bolt. So we'll take this off, we'll run it around the block and then we'll measure the two brackets to see what change there is, if any. It's tight. It will need to be extended. This is definitely pulling this driver's side front down. So you can see here we've got the front bolt out and the rear nut and bolt out. And already you can see that the car has lifted a little bit because that's not going to line up if we were to put a bolt in there. I'm going to take it around the block and then get that measurement. So remember we were 347. huge difference is where the steering wheel sitting now going straight so it used to be straight I'm anal with that but now it's kind of gone a little bit left hand down so that's because we freed things up we've let the car come back up to its right height with where the spring wants it to be and now with the wrap bar we've got to just adjust the length of it and put it back on and that'll stop any axle wrap on the front. Might pay to uh, take our drop drag link with us at the end of the week when we take this off road for the test. That angle's not so bad, but I'm worried we will bind up at full flex. So we'll have that with us as a spare. After that run around the block, we're almost at 360. So that's 15 mil it needs to be longer. Poor runner. Now, cause we've done that little mod to the Hilux, I need to pinch the front shocks off this. These are a much longer shock than what I'm running in the dual cab. While I'm here with tools, I'm gonna borrow this too. So in the past on comp trucks, we've cut these, we've made them this desired length, and then we've put a tube welded end to end. But this isn't a comp truck, this is a car that we do drive a lot on the road. So these are the adjustable ones you get. Now what we need to do is make this longer than what it is now. As simple as cracking that lock nut and winding it out. Now you wanna have it even thread each side. So we'll probably have to start winding the other side in. Pretty much similar. We're about 10 mil longer. So what we'll do is we can bolt one side on and then we can still adjust it with the one side in and then just keep testing to see where it's best gonna sit. I've chosen to bolt up the back and now we can adjust the front by spinning it one way or the other, whether we need it to be. So we can line that up now dead center of that bolt. 
Now this is the captive side. This is the one with the captive nut on it. Longer. Longer again. Okay, that looks pretty good there. So this should slip in without any force and start doing up. There you have it. Lock these up. I like to get some marks on these lock nuts to make sure that they don't come loose. It looks like I've got to take the steering wheel off in any case to straighten it. I'd love to use that wheel. It's the best wheel. It's probably one of my most favorite Hilux wheels. So Mark from Sydney Motor Trimmers uh, with the Suzuki. You've seen him in our videos before. Good crawl speed. All right, this is where we have a few numbers. He did that up for me, and um, I did use it in the Forerunner for a little bit, but now it's just been hanging there because I didn't want the sun to hit it while the Forerunner's out on the street. But I think I'm going to try and get it on the 106. So looking at the back of the steering wheel, the holes here are a little bit different to the series before. So I don't think it's going to cancel out the indicator when the indicator comes on. And also too, the horn's not going to work, it's in a different spot. So back with an LN106 it is. That's another really good conditioned LN106 wheel. But I can't take that from the display. I haven't given up yet. So what do we got here? So that's a 42mm centre to the holes, and that's a 32 A couple of 5mm holes you reckon? I think I'm going to try it. It's no good being a shelf coil at right. I haven't got the nut on yet. Indicate left. Oh, it works. <laughs> I even got the horn to work. You got to agree though, isn't that the best looking steering wheel? It doesn't look out of place at all on this truck. That's it for this episode. What we've got coming up, comment down below what you'd like to see next episode. That run with the bikes and the bike trailer in the mud. We've got bullet truck in the night stage at the on all fours challenge, plus, our first run on those Kumos under the 106. And as always, thanks for watching.